Hello, my name is Juan Nicolas Pulido. I'm an assistant professor of anesthesiology and a consultant in the division of critical care medicine and adult cardiovascular anesthesia at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. In the next few minutes, I'd like to present the, an overview of our paper entitled Clinical Spectrum Frequency and Significance of Myocardial Dysfunction in Severe Sepsis and Septic Shock which will be published in an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In terms of background, it is important to understand that sepsis represents a complex challenge in healthcare due to its clinical and economic burden. It's a frequent disease and also has significant mortality, up to 30 to 50 percent. Severe sepsis is defined as sepsis with the addition of an organ dysfunction or organ hypoperfusion or evidence of organ hypoperfusion. Of these organ dysfunctions, myocardial dysfunction is actually one of the most complex and difficult to characterize due to the complex interaction between the host, the disease, the disease effects on cardiac function itself, and also the complex cardiopulmonary interactions, mostly when patients are on positive pressure ventilation. The definition of myocardial dysfunction has been out there for over two decades, since the first report in the 1980s by Parker and collaborators, uh, the focus was mainly on left ventricular systolic dysfunction as the main representative of myocardial dysfunction in severe sepsis and septic shock. Nevertheless, it has been noticed and that uh, relaxation abnormalities are also a big uh, component of this uh, spectrum and right ventricular dysfunction, and there are numerous uh, studies evaluating this as well. The mechanisms of myocardial dysfunction in sepsis are yet to be elucidated, but there is a lot of research effort in that regard. And due to the lack of clear definition of myocardial dysfunction in sepsis, uh, we sought to determine the clinical spectrum of this entity. What is known now is, is defined as a left ventricular ejection fraction less than 45 to 50 percent in a patient with sepsis and normal previous uh, cardiac function. There is nothing in the definition of myocardial dysfunction in sepsis that tells you about myocardial relaxation or right ventricular dysfunction. Therefore, we elected to evaluate prospectively all comers with severe sepsis and septic shock to three ICUs at Mayo Clinic over a period of 18 months and evaluate with comprehensive echocardiography uh, the both diastolic uh, performance left ventricular systolic function and right ventricular dysfunction. We enroll a total of 106 patients prospectively over this 18-month period. Uh, these patients were screened by a computer a sniffer program that uh, helped us uh, identify all these uh, patients with systemic inflammatory response criteria and with a possible sepsis. We, after screening of the patients, we went ahead and consent them and we got a total of 106. These patients received a comprehensive echocardiogram at time of admission to the ICU within the, uh, in the first 24 hours uh, of admission of ICU and they received a follow-up echocardiogram if they had a left ventricular systolic dysfunction or right ventricular dysfunction uh, at admission. Exclusion criteria included patients with previous cardiovascular disease, including valvular dysfunction or coronary artery disease with an uh, abnormal echocardiogram. Patients with coronary artery disease were including in the study only if they had a normal echocardiogram, including normal diastolic evaluation in the previous six months prior to the study. Our results uh, demonstrated that myocardial dysfunction in sepsis is common. 64% of the patients, 68 patients in total, had any sort of myocardial dysfunction, of which 39 had diastolic dysfunction, 29 had left ventricular systolic dysfunction, and 33 had right ventricular uh, dysfunction. The important thing about this finding is that we had, there was significant overlap be between the three, as well as there were some patients with isolated dysfunctions. The mortality in our patient population was 36% at 30 days and 57% at one year. When we compared Every, every myocardial dysfunction to the patients that had normal echocardiograms during the septic episodes, which were a total of 38, we found that there was no significant difference in mortality. Furthermore, we also compared uh, all the physiological variables that were relevant to myocardial function loading conditions, 
uh, between bo uh, both normal myocardial function and the different dysfunction types. Uh, please refer for the details in the manuscript. What does this finding relate to clinical practice? I think it is important to understand that currently most providers think of myocardial dysfunction in sepsis merely by the presence of low ejection fraction. I think this study helps the providers understand that uh, myocardial dysfunction has much broader implications including relaxation abnormalities which may happen with patients with normal ejection fraction and right ventricular dysfunction. It is important also that we uh, to understand that we also evaluated the presence of myocardial dysfunction and try to evaluate for all the possible uh, variables that could confound the results including a positive pressure ventilation, PEEP, acidosis, and so on. What this uh, means is that uh, we should go and look beyond ejection fraction when we look at a patient that has a severe sepsis. What does this finding mean to our patients? It is important to understand that this organ failure is quite frequent and also it is important to realize that uh, in our cohort of 106 patients there was no uh, correlation between the development of myocardial dysfunction and mortality. In our view and the view of the authors, the next step uh, in research in this arena is first understanding that myocardial dysfunction in severe sepsis and septic shock has a wide clinical spectrum. We can tailor our next research approach by uh, incorporating echocardiography in the goal-directed approach for resuscitating patients with severe sepsis and septic shock. We all know that uh, goal-directed therapy in severe sepsis and septic shock does improve the outcomes of our patients. Therefore, incorporating ultrasound evaluation to understand the therapeutic index for fluid administration may be an, an important uh, and appealing uh, field for further research. The takeaway message of our paper is that uh, we need to go beyond the ejection fraction when we characterize myocardial dysfunction. It has a wider spectrum that goes beyond, that goes from left ventricular diastolic uh, function, left ventricular systolic dysfunction, and right ventricular dysfunction. There are some patients that have all of these three. There are some patients that have isolated subsets of myocardial dysfunction. But I think as a whole, we should be uh, more broad when we define myocardial dysfunction in sepsis. Uh, please refer for further details to our study, and I hope you enjoy it. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.